morning. Now, we do have the fifth minister. We don't have a huge amount of time. I don't know if we're going to can run slightly over 12 o'clock. I'm looking for uh, slightly beyond 12 o'clock. I'm looking for some guidance on that, maybe. Uh, anyway, let's um, speak to uh, Minister Jim Shishin, who I've not yet introduced. Let me quickly uh, tell you his background. Uh, he was formerly an investment banker at uh, Investment Capital Ukraine and previously at ING, uh, and then was chairman of the National Regulatory Commission for Energy and Utilities. Uh, so, Minister Demchishin, uh, we only have a few moments, but if you could tell us, uh, perhaps first of all, on natural gas, which is always a key issue for Ukraine, uh, where are things at now? There's, there's going to have to be negotiations for a new package shortly with Russia, as I understand. When's that going to happen? How will that take place? Uh, and where are we on the issue of uh, reverse flows and what uh, Ukraine is getting from other European partners? Let's start with that. Um, thank you for, for your question. In reality, um, you are right. Uh, gas trans transportation and consumption uh, in Ukraine is one of the most important energy-related questions. However, uh, over the last uh, three months, I've discovered that um, electricity is a um, big market, very important market, uh, vulnerable market, unfortunately, and uh, you know, a lot of effort has been done over the last three months to stabilize it. Um, in terms of value, electricity is um, you know, now, given devaluation, smaller, but this is uh, not less than 150 billion uh, grivna a year. You know, it used to be a large part. Um, apart from electricity, uh, oil and gas, we also have um, coal, um, very important issue. Uh, 52,000 people working at 35 mines, um, extracting 7 million tons very inefficiently, um, big social issue for many uh, local um, um, parties. Therefore, um, last month was spent with huge effort focusing on coal as well. In terms of uh, gas, um, I think that um, you know, uh, falling oil price has been playing our direction. Therefore, we were very efficient working on spot market, uh, getting flow from reverse, uh, getting reverse flow and, you know, lowering our uh, cost of uh, gas for our consumers. It, it has been an uh, efficient strategy. Uh, recently, we've seen uh, oil going up. Therefore, you know, we, start, we, we already started thinking about locking in or negotiating uh, longer-term contracts. Regarding a summer package, well, um, I think it will depend heavily on geopolitics, um, depending on the most recent developments, situation um, may change. Uh, Russians look at the current situation in terms of uh, selling gas very simply, they, uh, the formula is there. So uh, the only part they are ready to discuss is uh, discount. Uh, from our side, we believe that there are more issues to be discussed. Therefore, I personally think that there will be room for a uh, summer package. And uh, Europeans are supporting us in this, in this area, in this direction. Well, again, geopolitics will, geopolitics will depend. Uh, I think that um, uh, in reality, key issue is um, local uh, production. You know, as soon as we, now we have developed already a reverse flow capacity. We can uh, bargain with um, Gazprom, but strategically, we do have sufficient reserves, uh, and we should develop it. Uh, pr uh, production to reserve ratio of more than 50 doesn't make sense. And uh, therefore, um, I think we have to think very uh, thoroughly about the subsoil tax, 
that is demotivating investors uh, on entering the market, on developing more actively. This is big, uh, big problem, you know, in the, specifically now when the budget does have its um, limitations and we are trying, you know, to fix, to fix the, the budget by pretty much sacrificing or um, perspective of uh, getting self-sufficient in terms of gas supply in three, four years. Can I just interrupt? Um, where are the reserves that you're talking about? Because in, over the past year, it would appear uh, that Ukraine's hopes for uh, increasing domestic production and uh, moving towards energy independence have suffered considerably uh, with what happened to Crimea. Uh, then we've had Chevron pull out of its uh, shale gas project in the, in the west, I understand. And of course, in the east, uh, there is the conflict. Um, so what, what are the reserves that you, you're talking about developing? And uh, you know, how realistic are the chances for increasing domestic production in coming years? We, uh, recently, we've uh, focused heavily on uh, unconventional reserves, on uh, shale, uh, sh uh, um, um, on sh shale gas, on uh, uh, Chernomor nafta gas extracting from the uh, offshore uh, uh, wells. You know, but but in reality. Um, we do have more than one trillion of uh, cubic meters of reserves uh, of conventional gas. Um, there are many uh, outdated uh, wells already there, which may be repaired. So uh, most of the effort should be focused on, on in this direction. Ukargas Dobicha, with uh, recent changes in um, um, tariff. Uh, in tariffs uh, will or should at least receive additional uh, capital, additional funding for developing its own reserves. I, and I agree, it won't happen overnight, but uh, specifically uh, repairing already uh, available uh, wells uh, is fairly quick and uh, cost-efficient strategy. So this direction will be developed. In terms of uh, Shell, uh, in terms of um, Chevron, um, I met several times with, with them. And uh, based on my personal feeling, uh, there are various reasons, not necessarily uh, economic reasons, uh, but there are also other reasons why they were hesitating or pulling out. Uh, uh, I mean, falling oil price, one uh, first uh, results of, of their, their drill, drillings significant, significantly impacted their decision. But uh, one of the strange reasons which, which can be fixed was uh, VAT return, refund. You know, with their specifics, investing a lot of uh, significant amounts of money without uh, uh, refund, they are incurring at the, at the large risk uh, additional capex. This is something that should be discussed and we, we are working on this. There is working group jointly with uh, Mr. Billows. We will try to develop some, some ideas just to soften, to, just to remove this problem, which can then impact their, uh, their decision on staying or not. We have to finish any moment, I think, but let me ask you one final question, if I may, which is just on the, on the coal industry. You, you spoke about uh, issues in the coal industry. Now, a significant portion of coal output comes from the east, from the conflict zone. Uh, what are the implications of that for uh, power generation and uh, industry elsewhere in uh, Ukraine and how you're dealing with those with those issues. Well, you are very right. Uh, we lost um, about 60 mines that were uh, mining uh, anthracite coal. 50% uh, of our TPPs used were built 
to consume, specifically anthracite. Anthracite is very rare in terms of uh, reserves worldwide, but it was available here and it is available in um, Kuzbas. So these are natural areas for, for anthracite. Now we have uh, several projects on converting uh, boil, uh, boilers that, uh, that use regular thermal coal, so-called G-type or gas type of coal. Uh, oh, we, we are converting anthracite uh, co uh, boilers that were used uh, that use anthracite into gas type of coal, and. Uh, this is the only strategy to, uh, to change the balance. On the other side, we also understand that, you know, um, mines are there that can extract uh, anthracite. And uh, 3 million tons of anthracite already available on the, uh, on the uh, surface in the ATO area, they will be, they should be used. Therefore, I think that as soon as the geopolitical issue would soften, uh, we, we, we will uh, forget about uh, this problem and we will revert to export markets. Ukraine historically was exporting uh, uh, electricity. Last year we exported 8 billion uh, kilowatt hours. Um, this year, due to devaluation, we again increase, uh, slowly increase uh, export, which is good for working places, for taxes, for currency inflows, for other issues. And uh, capacities are here, you know. It wouldn't be uh, reasonable not to use uh, generation capacities. Um, coal is also here. Unfortunately, the structure is strange. We have 50-50 in, in generation, anthracite gas type of coal, but um, we can get only 25, 75 being supplied. So, uh, but I, look, we, we went through this winter, it, was, it wasn't easy, but uh, we are almost there. Last two, three days of cold weather, I think we will get through it. Um, Next two, three months, we will spend focusing on technical issues. And uh, I'm sure that with nuclear, nuclear power stations already available, with sunk cost made, with uh, operational cost fairly optimal, um, we are well prepared for you know, fixing the, this problem. Uh, the one more issue that I would like to raise is uh, is uh, structure of consumption. We have dramatic disproportion in, in electricity consumption, looking at the night and in the peak time during the day. Uh, a lot of effort is done now just to fix this problem. And uh, it will impact efficiency, it, it will impact consumption of coal, it will impact stability of the system. So there are few very simple issues which, if fixed, can dramatically change the system. But thank you, uh, Minister Demchishin and all of the other ministers for uh, very fascinating presentations. <laughs>